All right, go ahead, Sandy. Thanks. Do you want to take it off the agenda or do you want to leave the agenda up? Uh, we can take it off, then we can see faces. Yeah, okay. I think that's a little nicer. Thanks for doing that. Um, I, I, I had talked to um, the Booster Club and to Sherry about uh, some questions I've been having about people coaching high school athletes. I and mean, these are questions that come up with various programs at various times. So I just want to clarify some rules uh, from the MSHSL standpoint so that you guys, we're all kind of on the same page for those things. So first, um, I'm going to try to equip you with some facts tonight so we can move forward and have this great season. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait for fall because it's just going to be so great to see kids' faces and the smiles on their faces and watch them play the game that they love. And I'm so very excited for that. I can't even tell you. Not being around kids as much as normal last year was really tough. And I know it was tough on your on your kids. Um, and we're excited about moving forward and uh, in having those things happen again. So anyway, first, I'm going to talk about uh, high school club and business. Okay, so those three things in sport. So when I was growing up, and maybe when some of you were growing up, there weren't very, there weren't very many clubs in youth sports. Now it's a $17 billion business. And lots of people make a living who are not college or professional coaches. Uh, and they're coaching youth because they love the game. And uh, this maybe is their passion. There are warehouses of courts and fields and pitching areas and batting areas and domes. And those have all been built for training, right? Uh, which is, is very new to our society in many ways. And because of this, our athletes are better skilled, uh, but the pressure to play outside is greater for high school sports than it's ever been. And I'm not here to tell you what to do about that. I'm letting you know about the information and how the MSHSL views that. So some questions, the first question I'll answer is when can a high school 10th JV or varsity coach coach high school athletes, okay? That's during the season. So in the case of soccer this fall, it'll be August 16th through the state tournament or whenever the kid, whenever the athlete joins a club. And then it's June 1st to August 31st, minus the no contact week, which this year, this summer fell uh, in over the July 4th week. And that's when it always falls. So it's somewhere in that July 4th time period. It shifts a little bit here or there, but June 1st, June 1st to August 31st in most years and minus the no contact week. Ninth grade coaches, as long as they're not involved with upper level levels can coach all year long. They're not under the same high school league rule as your B squad, JV and varsity coach are. Um, second question, can a coach own a business? The answer is yes. Many high school coaches do own businesses that revolve around sport. Uh, so a high school coach or person working with the following levels, B squad, JV or varsity can uh, coach an MSHSL team, and they can own, direct, administer a business, providing uh, training for teams, camps, or clinics in the same sport um, for their athletes. Uh, if it is during the times when the season is not happening, then the information or the training has to be delivered by someone other than the high school coach, but it is legal for them to own that business. Um, did that make sense? Like a, a person who owns a dance studio, maybe a high school dance coach, but she is not coaching the class at her studio with her high school kids in it. Okay. Uh, can a coach de develop curriculum for their business uh, or camps regarding their business? And the answer to that is also yes. The high school coach can de develop curriculum for their business for athletes who use the business. And that can include athletes from their high school team. So a coach could do curriculum for a camp or uh, people who are at their business, even if it's in the off season. So even if it's during the time period that they can't coach kids, they can still develop curriculum, but it cannot be delivered by them. Uh, that curriculum would have to be uh, implemented by someone else. Okay. A lot of times you see this opposite gender coaching. So like in basketball, it may be that the boys coach is coaching the girls in the off season, the girls is coaching the boys uh, programs can do that, that sort of thing. Or, uh, you know, that, that's, that's how I would explain it is that somebody else can be coaching your kid in the off season at that business. And that curriculum could still be developed by the high school coach um, clubs. 
coaches can coach at clubs, as you know, a lot of coaches do in a boy, a lot of sports, almost all of them. Uh, so many, many coaches coach at clubs understand that, uh, that they just can't coach kids who have been or students who have played on their B squad, JV or varsity team. Uh, they may be in the field next to them. They may be on the field two down, but they shouldn't be training those athletes that, that play for them. Can a coach recommend a club? I'll be honest. I don't know of many high school coaches who don't have athletes asking them about what do you think? Or parents saying, what do you think? Where should my kid go? What should they do? Um, if a coach is, is aware of clubs, they can say, hey, I think you fit here or you fit there, but you guys got to decide as a family what you want to do. You know, this coach, need, this, this club maybe needs more goalies or whatever it happens to be, uh, but they cannot tell an athlete where to play. But they can give recommendations to families when they ask for them and things like that. Totally fine. Um, and sometimes coaches have, you know, they've been around the game a long time and they have insights that maybe families don't have about various clubs. So that's kind of my club thing. Uh, and just that's giving you a quick insight again, when can they coach? Can you own a business? Uh, can they develop curriculum for that business? And then, um, can a coach coach a club? Sorry, somebody's playing music outside my door here. I'm going to close it. Sorry about that. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was just high school tryouts, because I think this is something that people really, um, it's hard. High school tryouts are hard. Club tryouts are hard. Uh, but I would say the high school tryouts are probably the hardest thing for coaching staff. It's the thing they lose the most sleep over. There's a pyramid, right? We got hundreds of kids who play youth soccer and in a community. And then that pyramid kind of thins out as you as you head toward that uh, B squad, JV and varsity level. And there are limited spots on teams. We can't take everyone who comes all the time because we have limited space, limited people. And so sometimes in certain years, there are more players than there are spots and we do have to do cuts. We've been very uh, lucky in some years we haven't had to do cuts. The number of players has hit you know, a right amount where we could keep everyone. That doesn't always happen. Uh, as true of all head coaches, Sherry and her staff have been directed to put the best, best athletes on the top team based on skill level, athleticism, position, mental game, et cetera. And I'm sure Sherry will talk about that a little bit too. Let me give you an example of this. You might think um, the best deal for the wild would be to put Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter on the team, but wild manager Bill Guerin had a different idea, right? He didn't see the fit there. Um, or the guy down the street might think differently. So sometimes it's easy to select teams and things like cross country when there's a stopwatch involved. There's some ease, more ease to that. Here it's not. When you're talking about how does how do puzzle pieces fit together uh, based on uh, you know again all those things we we just mentioned skill level, athleticism, position, mental game. Um, they have to make choices on how those puzzle pieces are going to fit. And the puzzle that they put together may be different than the puzzle that you imagine or you would see. Uh, but they have to make the best choice possible for their teams at that given time. And are they always perfect? I would say no. They're probably not always perfect. And, uh, you know, you might not always agree with them, but they do have the job of putting the best team together possible, especially at the varsity level in trying to fit those pieces together if that makes sense. So uh, I think it's hard. It's always hard uh, when people are passionate about something. I think that makes it really difficult. But just know that those are some of the things that I wanted to mention here. Again, I am super excited about this fall. I am really looking forward to seeing our kids on the field and, and uh, watching them have that opportunity to do things that they love. And, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But all right, that's kind of what I had to say. I tried to keep it short because I know we got a lot on the agenda tonight. Thank you very much, Sandy. If anybody has questions, you can put them in the chat, or if you want to follow up via email, you can email to the blast that's gone out or directly to uh, Sandy or others. So thank you very much. You got it. Um, with that, Sherry, I am going to hand it over to you, and I am going to attempt to share my screen. We'll see how it goes. Sherry's the coach. 
Yeah. You can see it, Nate. Hey, it worked. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Sherry should be joining momentarily. Hey, there you are, Sherry. <laughs> All righty. Awesome. Hopefully everybody can hear me here. I'm in my car. Um, yeah, you out at school? the fields. If you guys can oh, mute. If people can mute, that would be helpful. Alrighty, thank you for being on the call and thank you to Sandy. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk to us just about all the rules and helping us uh, make sure we understand what um, the year looks like, um, full year all the way around. So thank you very much, Sandy, for your time um, and everybody coming on the phone call. Looking forward to the fall. Uh, even last year with the pandemic, we found a way to have a great experience for the players and the teams and also found a way to be uh, section champions and beat Rosemont, you know, one of our biggest rivals. Um, in that final game, and it was really uh, kind of a Cinderella year. And so uh, it's just I cannot wait for the fall to get the kids back, and hopefully this year can be even more normal uh, than what we experienced last year. So tonight, uh, just a simple meeting, going to talk about our summer training camps that we had, uh, the coaching staff, what the child structure and schedule will look like, team captains for each team, our parent meeting that's coming up, some of our communication and how to stay involved with updates, and then uh, what to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. Alrighty, so reviewing the summer training camps, uh, this was the largest uh, participation that I had uh, since I've started the, at the EHS program, which was wonderful to see. It's so great, you know, when we can only work with the kids for a certain period of time, it's wonderful to take advantage of the summer waiver period and having over 50 girls both weeks uh, was really exciting for the program. It's uh, to see the talent that's returning and also the new talent coming in is, it's just awesome for the program and what uh, we're really building here at um, Egan. And to be a part of the Wildcat program is special and the kids should be proud of it. Um, and we're, we're a very big program and a lot of the players, you know, do play year round and um, come from various clubs. And so it's great to see how coming for them coming to, you know, a new environment and getting to know new players and maybe even playing a new position. So uh, it was just, it was just two weeks were fantastic. I already missed the players and it was kind of sad the last day when everybody was saying bye. Um, I really wanted to highlight the players work ethic. Uh, when they come to high school, I can see just a different level of motivation and like determination in them. And it was inspiring to see the things that they, um, you know, brought out of one another and to see uh, just how much they've improved since last year. The goal with summer camps is to help them prepare. And so when they come into tryouts, they, you know, understand what uh, the environment will feel like uh, getting to meet, you know, the juniors, the seniors, the returning sophomores, um, and also meeting the freshmen who are coming in. And so it just helps them you build their confidence and believe in themselves as, you know, they prepare to come to tryouts. Uh, I also feel like our experience that we've created as a coaching staff is uh, a place that the players enjoy coming to have great numbers when it was 90 degrees. And when you're on the turf, it's an extra 10 degrees hotter. I mean, it was hot when we were out there and there was not much complaining or whining and everybody uh, just worked hard and had a positive attitude. And so, you know, the, ex the environment and the experience we want to provide these kids is something that they want to be a part of and, and look forward to every fall. So thank you for everybody that supported uh, the summer camps and showed up. It was great. And I, I can't wait to be back on the field uh, with the players soon. Uh, introducing the coaching staff, um, myself, Sherry Ekstrom. This is my third year uh, with the program. Uh, returning varsity coaches from last year is uh, Coach Dylan and Carrie. Uh, returning as well, the JV coach is Coach B. He'll be back. I have a few people that I'm working with uh, for B squad that have uh, showed a lot of interest in that team. And so I'll be finalizing that this week and I'll make sure that Nathan and I get that updated on the website. So people will know who the coach will be. And then Joe Sway is coming back uh, for his second season with the freshman team as well. I think that these coaches are, you know, some of the coaches were part of the Egan program and are giving back, which I think is really cool to kind of see that full circle and want to give back to the, place where they grew up and had great memories and also just a lot of experience between us with both having males and females. I think we have a very rare uh, just coaching dynamic and uh, fun presence for the kids 
um, to learn from and be a part of and have role models and mentors in their life that hopefully we can be a part of their lives for, for many years, not just the four years that they're here, but also uh, when they leave. All right, so just going into tryouts, um, at this is tentative as well. Uh, Sandy and I will be finalizing the tryout schedule. Obviously in the fall, we have to work around um, all the other fall sports, we're not the only sport going, and also all the boys programs. So it is a busy, busy schedule. Uh, we will do two-a-days. Um, those start in the beginning of the week, so morning sessions and afternoon sessions. The uh, groups will be broken up by their classes. So to start off on Monday the 16th, the uh, upperclassmen will show up first, and then the underclassmen will follow them. Same thing in the afternoon. And then also on Tuesday morning, they'll be training within their class. Following Tuesday morning, we will break into our pools. So our 9A and our B squad pools and our JV varsity pools. So then following um, Tuesday, the players will trade in their pools um, as we continue to evaluate and look at those groups. Same thing with Wednesday morning and Wednesday early afternoon, I'll post B squad and 9A um, teams on Team Snap. And then we'll kind of get that schedule going for them. And then they'll have the afternoon off. Uh, we'll see if varsity and JV will play Thursday. Uh, JV varsity are still in pool training, so they'll pool train. Uh, B squad and 9A will have team training. And Thursday afternoon, the goal is to post the varsity and JV um, either teams or still possibly a pool. Varsity will train in the afternoon. Um, and then Friday, all teams will train. Uh, we will hand out uniforms, and we're also looking to have pitchers on this day. We will stagger this so that the players, um, you know, can come in and out and get their uniform. We have a smooth transition between everybody, um, but take advantage of that on Friday. Saturday is our uh, scrimmages. So JV varsity will have scrimmages at Eastridge. So we go there and play uh, three games usually, or two to three games. And then B squad and 9A uh, will scrimmage at EHS. And I am uh, looking to bring in an opponent that I can, you know, I'm trying to do that. If not, they'll, scrimmage one another, and then Sundays are always off. So that is what our first uh, week will look, at, look like with tryouts. And, um, you know, when we're evaluating players, there's not just, you know, one category that we're looking for, just a technical player or a tactical player, uh, but it's the physical aspect. It's the mental toughness piece. It's their character. Um, it's their psychological presence, their motivation, their determination. And so it's not just one category that matters. And so when we look at these kids, you know, it's the way they impact the players around them. Um, it's the way they play on Monday and on Wednesday, uh, seeing who can bring it, seeing who is coachable, seeing who can really compete in, you know, an environment that maybe they're not as comfortable in. And so there's just a lot of uh, pieces that go into, you know, when we're looking at players. And so I just want to keep encouraging the kids to be well-rounded and, and know that, we, you know, we're always watching and seeing the way that they impact the group, uh, the way they treat each other with respect and, um, you know, just, you know, that every day, you know, what they bring. And so it's important that they continue to just prepare. The more you prepare for anything, the better that you will, you know, perform and execute when you're in that moment. And so summer camps is a great environment for that. We ran, you know, the fitness test that we'll do at tryouts and the players got to do that together um, and see that. And they did fantastic. Um, and they also got to see some of the technical, um, not tests, but, you know, standards that we will do at tryouts and, um, they got to work on that together. So they know what to practice and what to prepare. Uh, so when they come into tryouts, they can be as confident as they can be. And I would just keep encouraging them um, to go to stuff. Don't skip stuff. Go meet new people um, and really just step out of your comfort zone because that's what's helped you become much more confident when you, you know, you show up to tryouts and you don't, you might not know anybody or you got to get a new partner. That's going to help you be ready for that moment. Uh, one thing I also want to say is that the players really need to take care of their bodies. I know that there's injuries. I even think with COVID, you know, they had a lot of time off and then they came back and the schedules were uh, really busy. And so the next couple of weeks, they really need to take care of their bodies and make sure that if they're doing anything that hurts, um, they should stop and make sure that, you know, they're taking the time off that they need, but then just to make sure to take care of the injuries and come into trials as healthy as you can be so that we can be great this fall. I've posted this picture to the website so that everybody can kind of see what the tentative agenda looks like so they can prepare for that. Um, and uh, to add to what Sherry was saying, we'll also be posting the teams 
within the website because it has room for all each of the four teams to be posted. So we'll get that up as quick as we can during tryout week. Once I finalize this schedule with Sandy, we will also add it to our schedule on our website so that you guys can see it. And then this would be mirrored in Team Snap once teams are, are formed. So things moving forward would just be in your Team Snap page. Uh, that would be you know specific for everything. Team training, parent meetings, pasta parties, everything like that uh, will be on your Team Snap page. So try week is a fun week. Uh, it's great to just you know get to see the kids and really structure what we're going to work on each day and how we're developing them. And so it's a fun week. I hope that they're excited for it. Obviously we, we meant, or uh, we taper the athletes and we make sure that, you know, the environment that we're training in is, is safe. So um, hydrating and uh, we'll also have our trainer out there on the field um, throughout the week. So if there are any questions about that, please put it in the chat, but this is what um, everybody can expect for the 16th. I uh, want to just introduce again the program and varsity captains for this year. I put them in order as the pitcher. This is after we beat Rosemount. Unfortunately, we didn't get to go to the state tournament, but um, what a what an exciting experience to have with a group of players. Uh, so starting on the left side, that's Megan Carlson, three-year varsity player. Uh, Lauren Rockford, three-year varsity player. And Sarah Brecklin is a four-year varsity player. Uh, really excited about their leadership. Um, and to see the impact that they're going to make, not only to varsity, but all the other teams. Um, and for them to also be a mentor and a leader that the girls uh, returning look up to and the incoming players. Uh, one thing I want to highlight is that I also do team captains for the other teams and the coaching staff and I select these players as we're going through the tryout week. And so each team will have captains that will be announced when we post teams. Uh, we did this last year and I thought it was um, it really just helped the girls, you know, take on, take that role seriously. And if you want to be a leader, it's not about, you know, showing up one time or, um, you know, helping somebody. It's about that consistency. It's about um, having discipline and, and wanting the best for the team and holding the team accountable. It's about having a positive attitude and a, a positive, you know, mindset when people talk about how hot it is or, oh, they're tired. And, you know, they're the one that says, like, let's get better today. And they pick the people up and, and they change the negative talk to positive. Uh, the, the way they treat one another with respect, whether they're talking to another captain, a senior or a freshman, uh, you know, we respect one another, referees, coaches, parents, uh, very respectful environment. Servant leadership is something I always look for, uh, not being the first player to leave, uh, willing to help stay and, and um, you know, carry the balls, help with the little details that matter, that make the program great. Um, always work ethic to be the hardest working player. And then again, that character piece, the integrity um, the things they do before practice, after practice, and just those little relationships. And so there's a lot of different ways to be a leader and to be a captain. And we're not looking for just one style of leadership. It's good to see different players that have qualities that we can bring together and that they can really bring the best out of their team. So uh, we'll share this with the players as well. And we've been talking about it, but we will have captains on uh, the other three teams as well. So moving into our parent meeting, this is our all program parent meeting. Uh, the times are at the top. So 5.30 is 9A, 5.45 is B squad, 6.45 JV and seven o'clock varsity. Uh, this year we chose to stagger the meeting so that uh, the parents don't have to wait in a long line as everybody's going through the same thing and trying to figure out what's going on. And we can really have specific conversations to the team. Uh, they can meet the coach and then Sandy and I'll be able to bop into each group um, and have a conversation with the families um, and just set some of the expectations we have for the year. So this meeting will be following tryout week. Uh, we'll come back Monday and have team training. And then August 24th uh, will be our, our kind of our kickoff. So it'll be at Egan High School. We've already reserved the rooms. So we'll put those rooms on our team snap page. Uh, we ask that one parent from each player is in attendance uh, for this meeting. We will do, uh, we'll assign a team parents, almost like a team manager for each team that will help with team snap events, uh, scheduling some pasta parties and some other things that we just do program wide. And then um, I also want to uh, have Jay Jensen talk a little bit about the volunteer sign up opportunities. Uh, being a part of the um, high school program now, there's a lot of ways for you guys to volunteer and be involved. Um, and, you know, the more the merrier here to help things run smoothly. 
Um, and if you're, you know, young, you can kind of see what it looks like. So as your player goes through the program, uh, we can continue to pass the baton and things just keep getting better as we, we move forward into our season. So I'll let Jay talk about uh, what those look like. Yeah, thanks, Coach Sherry. Um, you know, many hands make light work, right? Uh, and there's a lot of things that go into putting on a varsity game. Uh, Egan High School has a great reputation in soccer, especially uh, our girls program. And so we want to represent that program with excellence. And really, when we have other teams come uh, and visit our stadium, and playing a game in our stadium, we want them to look at it and say, this is how to do it the right way. So uh, with that being said, there will be opportunities at the parent meeting to sign up. Uh, I am the game day coordinator. There are multiple things going on during game day from banner hanging to concessions to the ball crew, uh, opportunities to work in Egan TV, to run the scoreboard, um, we do things prior to the game where we set up a tunnel that the girls run through. Uh, we bring refreshments, uh, et cetera. So there are a lot of different things. Uh, none of them uh, on their own take a significant amount of commitment or time, but all of them together uh, is a lot. So um, I'll be soliciting help to get that done. And uh, hopefully there'll be some good interest. So thanks, Sherry. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. You bet. Jay is fun to work with as well. So that can be a fun, you know, when we volunteer, we always want it to be somewhere you guys want to be as well. And it can be fun and enjoyable. Um, we'll have fun. So, yeah. <laughs> always. Alrighty, just wanted to highlight um, our communication and information, um, how you guys can find updates. And so we've been working hard on this. You know, it's always challenging. I know with incoming freshmen, that's kind of been, uh, you know, uh, communication that we're really trying to bridge. Uh, so there's not so many questions and that we're helping getting information out. So um, our captains have been great at getting things out on social media. And so I encourage you guys to follow us on all three platforms. If you have them or have your player, um, follow us on these um, social media platforms. So Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. And when we post something on one, it should be going on all three. So if you follow one, you should be getting the information out um, as we're sending it. And then we've also started to use the new Sports Engine website uh, that uh, Sandy has put in place for all sports, which has been really helpful that it's starting to look uniformed across, you know, it doesn't matter what sport, if you have multiple kids at EHS, hopefully we can all start you know, using the same website and having the information you need um, right there. So we've been doing, you know, diligently trying to add uh, specific details for you guys. So uh, check out our, um, the EganWildcats.org and go to ball and go to girls soccer and you should be able to find um, the information that you're looking for there. Uh, yeah. Nathan, so do you want to talk about yeah. that site? Additionally, Sherry, we try to send a blast out as often as we can for email related pieces. Um, so if you signed up on the old site or you send an email to the, uh, the Booster Club email address, we try to get you added so you get all the emails. So there'll be another email coming out after this meeting, which is kind of the official kickoff from our side of uh, really getting into the busy season. Um, so you'll be on that email. If you don't get that email and you're in this meeting, reach out or let me know and we'll get you added. So then you can get it in an email and in your Twitter and in your Facebook and in your Instagram, if you have all of those. I'm sure you at least have email. Alrighty, so uh, moving forward here in the next- Does uh, Sandy wanna speak to the captain's practices? And you're muted, Sandy. Sorry, I think one of the booster people was going to do that. Oh, all right. I can speak to that then quickly. Um, so captain's practices are not part of the program that starts on the 16th. It's a chance for all the girls to get together, get to know each other, and start prepping for it. It is not run by the um, by Sherry and crew. It's run by those captains you saw, those three. 
they've put that program together for two weeks of kind of having the girls get to know each other, play some soccer and really kind of start building those bonds early. So we, we really want to see that happen. As you can see, it's called out uh, August 2nd through the 5th and 9th through the 12th. Um, we mentioned those four different avenues of getting information. We will be pushing out the times and locations on those. It is a, a little more fluid to get those pieces set up because we want to make sure it's not done directly through the program, but instead done as a kind of a supplemental opportunity for these girls to, to really get in and start getting to know each other. So we're looking forward to seeing uh, the girls at those events. I will also update the website. There's kind of call outs of that information already on it. Um, that includes those captain's practices. Um, but if you don't find it, please reach out and we'll provide information. Fantastic. Um, so, yep, captains are coming up. And then one thing I want to say about that meeting on the 24th as well is that that's where we'll go into specific details uh, for your team. So we will go over um, the busing situation for games, um, away games, home game, what that looks like, uh, just game day for everybody, you know, when we meet at the school um, at home games, what those, um, you know, kind of what that those days are going to look like for you guys. So on the 24th, it's a really important meeting to be at. Uh, so that you get all that information. Uh, we do some pasta parties on each team. Um, we do some off the field stuff as well. So on the 24th, it'll be specific information to your team. Uh, the last thing I want to say is just that this is a new year. We had a great year last year, but it's time to flip the page. We got a new group of players. We have new leaders. You know, we're going to be a new team. And so it's exciting to see, you know, how they're going to come in, the hunger, the determination, uh, we are the team to beat. Last year, from freshman to B squad to JV, we had a very successful season uh, across our conference. And so people, you know, get ready to play us and, you know, bring their best when they play the Wildcats. So we kind of, we got to bring it every day. Uh, we got to be on, we got to grind. And so I'm really just looking forward to being back on the field. I can't wait. I love leading this program um, and all of the ladies that are a part of it. Um, it's exciting to see. Uh, so many more kids, you know, continuing to play soccer. So our goal this year, again, as always, is to maximize the players and team's potential so we can compete at the highest level on the field. So thank you guys for your support. I look forward to seeing all you guys on the 16th. Go Wildcats. So now a few more things from the booster side. Um, first off, to kind of Sherry's program, I watched all the games last year. The very first game we started off, it was tough soccer. It looked like it was going to be a tough season. If you stuck around and watched the season, it was such an amazing transition of these girls working together and building a team. That last game of the season, when they went out, when they were out in the dome of Dundas, wherever that was, um, it was amazing soccer. It's the kind of soccer like you'd be tuned in and watching. So if you watch the season and you stick with it, I'm kind of plugging to get people to come to the games, by the way. Um, it really is an awesome program to see. If, if you're just getting started, please go to your kid's game. But come to the varsity game. If you're a freshman, come see the varsity game and see these girls in action because that's where these girls are trying to get to. They're trying to get to that level. A lot of you play club soccer, you know, and that's that's a different type of soccer. It's a different program. But high school is, you know, it's high school. I'm sure we all look back to our high school times. This is high school soccer. Your kids should be excited. This this program, it it is compressed to August into October. It's a short period. Really help them embrace it help them jump in and be a part of this because it really is fun to go to these games and I don't know, have fun. Um, and that's why the booster's here. So we are here not to try to guide Sandy or Sherry in any way. They're doing their jobs and they're great at their jobs. Our job is to help. What can we do to help make it better? So all the things we do, you know, Jay trying to run the game day stuff to make things run smoothly. He's not going to be coaching on the sideline. He's going to make sure, oh, there's Gatorades and waters and cookies for these girls stuff to make it special and fun. That's what we're trying to do as the booster club. That's what we want you all to be involved in. You come to the games, you watch your kids, you want to see them grow through it. We have got a, a great board where we've got a lot of people who want to kind of do a little bit to help the program increase a lot. So um, we've got myself, Nathan Knoll, Dan Schultz, Donna, Beth, Trish, Brian, Jay, Sarah, Maureen, it's a huge crew that are all part of the board and we are all trying to help make this program grow.
great by just doing what we can to help. Um, I want to have a few of the people who are here speak to the kind of their parts of the program, um, just to make sure everybody can kind of see uh, what's going on and, and what we're doing to help and how you can be involved. So uh, Sherry and Sandy did a great job sharing their information and that's kind of the real soccer program. We're kind of doing the fun stuff. So please stick around and kind of we'll go through it if you've got time. Um, and actually uh, I'll start if I can with uh, the treasure report and Dan is here if you want to speak to that, Dan. Dan, you muted. Yes, I know I'm on mute. Sorry about that. Um, hi, I'm Dan Schultz. Uh, my daughter's Ava. She's a goalie. She's going to be returning as a junior this fall. Um, for the treasures report, we have approximately, you know, not approximately at all, 32868 right now. And that's after spending uh, about $3,000 on tryout shirts, $3,000 $3,600 on uniforms and socks, and uh, we wrote a $1,000 check to the Egan Foundation to fund two scholarships uh, for seniors graduating uh, this spring. Going forward, we've got some budget items. Uh, we've got a budget put together for the entire season, um, and uh, we've got you know money set aside and money planned for certain expenditures we experience every year, and a few other uh, money set aside for uh, special projects for this year. Um, I'll be at the uh, team meetings uh, on the 24th of the mandatory meetings and be able to walk you through uh, what the boosters uh, fees are going to be for each particular team. I can go through that now, but I think it's easier to deal with that later. Um, there's a, a rough number of uh, dollars that are uh, paid for by the students, and then we have other fundraisers that uh, fund quite a bit of our program. So it's important that uh, parents are at that mandatory meeting and uh, look at the opportunities, as Sherry had mentioned, to help out and volunteer, uh, because as Jay said earlier, many hands make uh, light work. Uh, and uh, it is fun to watch these girls uh, come together on game day and, uh, and, and really shine and, and let their hard work show off. So uh, that's probably all I had for the treasure report. Nathan, do you have anything specific you want me to go nope, through? No, that, that is perfect. Um, I mean, that gives an idea of what you put your money to and how it helps the program. Speaking of program, Brian, do you want to speak to kind of one of the big facets of what the uh, the Booster Club does, which is creates an actual program that is handed out uh, that has all the teams and all the players in it. So kind of everybody gets their own little book. Yeah, you bet. So my name is Brian Jadeke. I've got two daughters that will be uh, playing high school soccer next year. Samantha, who's a junior, and then Sydney, who's an incoming freshman. Uh, they had the pleasure of working with the Boys Booster Committee as well. We do share one program with the boys. So all of your daughter's team pictures will be in there once we've got all the teams generated. Uh, part of what we do to fund that project though is we get corporate sponsorships from you know, various real estate agencies, restaurants, orthopedic places, um, you name it. And this year I'm happy to say that we've raised about triple what we had last year in the tough COVID year. So what used to be a break even uh, program is now hopefully turned into a revenue generator. So we've raised just over $6,000 this year from corporate sponsorships. So um, we've done a, a good job with that, working with, uh, with the boys team. So we're excited to, you know, get that into production once we've got all the team set and you can see your kids' pictures uh, in the program at the games. We will have one additional um, opportunity when we have the parents meeting one thing that we do is we let families put ads in there too, uh, reaching out to their daughters and sons for a, a very small fee, but you can wish them good luck on the season or just write them a nice message to have that included in the program as well. So more to come when we get to the actual parents meeting on the 24th. So thank you, Brian. It's a fair amount of work to put it all together and it happens well in advance of the season because at the very start of the season, we take pictures we finish wrapping up that program and we get it out. So you actually have a program for the, uh, for the season to look at. So you can kind of put names to faces uh, throughout the year. Um, and of course, to make that happen, we need to make sure we have our uniforms on the girls so they can be <laughs> ready to get their pictures in uniform before they even play their first game. So Trish, do you want to speak to that? I can. Nathan, your transitions are amazing. Um, hi, nice. everybody. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Trisha Mantic. Um, I am part of the Booster Club and have helped 
Coach Sherry and the program with equipment and uniforms and apparel for the girls. Um, my daughter, Caitlin, is uh, a junior um, with the program. And then my younger daughter, Emma, is an incoming freshman. So I'll have two girls playing this year, hopefully. Um, so rest assured, first of all, that your daughters will have all of their uniforms provided by the school. They will get socks, they will get shorts, they will get jerseys. You know, obviously, like any place else you've played, you provide your own shin guards and cleats. But what they need to look fantastic and represent the school well on the field will be provided by us and returned by all of you, hopefully at the end of the year. Um, and we will take care of that on Friday, um, August 20th. Uh, once teams are determined so we can have them ready for pictures because that's got to turn around really quick to support a lot of things including that program that Brian's been working so hard on. The other option that you all have that is entirely optional but I want you to be aware of is an opportunity to buy all of your Egan girls soccer swag. It is um, an optional apparel store online that is open for all the players um, they come in and purchase anything that they would like. It is open to all parents, friends, family, Egan High School supporters. Um, none of it is required. It is all entirely up to you. We hope you you buy some and wear it to all those games that we're all going to come watch this year, hopefully, um, and support our girls on the field. Um, so there was a post on Twitter, as Sherry mentioned, the best way to stay up to the to date with the most current information, which I know our girls do and maybe is, is hard for you sometimes as it is for me, but is on the social media account. Um, we are gonna have a couple of different windows. Um, Sherry, I don't know if you've heard back from Brent or not, but the current window either closed last night or will close today. Um, and, you know, orders placed at this time will be available, you know, hopefully um, early enough in the season to have for the first game. And there will be another window open where folks who've missed the first one can go in and purchase some other things, but we can't guarantee you an early delivery on those. Sherry, did you hear back from Brent? I did not hear back from Brent yet, but um, okay. we'll, make, we'll make sure to send something out. And uh, just so you guys know the stories for all the players, but also parents, um, and family and really anyone else you want to buy stuff for. So there's stuff for everybody on there. Uh, it's not just for the players. So um, I, but once you find out, I'll make sure we email. I asked him a little bit ago. I haven't heard back. So, yep. Guys, we'll let I you just, know if. I was going to say, Go I ahead, just Dan. loaded up and it does load if you give it uh, some time. And there's a link is in the chat window. Um, Perfect. So there's some items you can take a look at. I think it does close tonight, but it will reopen soon and we'll have that information as to when it'll reopen uh, later. But as uh, Tricia said, if you want to get stuff delivered in a reasonable amount of time, you should jump on there tonight if you can and pick some items out. I was going to ask Tricia, Tricia, what did Caitlin or your girls get? What do they like to get out of the, the store? Have they got anything this year? Uh, we have not placed our order yet, so I'm glad that it's still open. Um, so, I mean, there's everything in there from short and long sleeve t-shirts. Take a look at what you're ordering because there's men's and women's fits, depending on who you're ordering for and what they like. Um, there's hoodies, there's jackets, there's hats, there's a, like a winter hat. Um, so also, you know, a good thing for that second window is all that Egan high school girls soccer swag. You're going to get people for the Christmas that they can wear next season. But, um, there's some, there's also pants. Um, if the, the kids are looking for leggings or sweatpants, so there's all kinds of things in there, you name it, we can put Egan soccer on it. So I'm glad it's, it's still open for folks. So if you have some time tonight, take a look and we'll keep you posted on, um, what some additional dates will be. Hey, Thanks. Trisha. Yeah. Hey, this is Bill Anderson. My daughter is London. She's the, she was a varsity goalie last year. And yeah, one, of the hi, issues, Bill. one of the issues ran into is we had to buy our own uniforms because the uniforms, did not fit were larger yep. sizes for goalie kids yes. purchased. They were. Yes. Okay. They absolutely were. So we have um two uh we have large and extra large um, okay. perfect goalie kits this year. So thank you for that feedback. I apologize. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure because struggle last year. Yeah, yep. they they run out of shirts so we were going to order them if we needed to, but it sounds like nope. it was under control, so. 
it should be. We have it and we'll make sure London gets what she needs. We also did a little bit of uh, gap filling um, over the summer, particularly in the shorts. The girls like their shorts a little bigger. So we ordered yeah. a few bigger sizes of shorts as well. So hopefully we will have sizes for everybody. Please let me know if we don't and we will do the best we can. The, the person that we work with, our contact at BSN is fantastic. Um, so we will do the best we can if we don't have what we need. Thank you so much. And Absolutely. Of course, all of that is provided through the booster club so that individuals right. don't have to pay for those pieces. So the booster has to pay for it, which means they have <laughs> to have money to pay for it. This is just teeing up too easily, um, which of course we try to do through programs, through the fees you have, but we like to supplement it and make sure there's enough money for all of these things we need, which is done through fundraising. So maybe Sarah can speak to that. I would love to, thank you. Give me plenty of lead time to unmute myself. Um, so just to be really brief, our main fundraiser this year is going to be the DSL fundraiser again. We, that was really successful last year. We're going to go ahead and do that again this year and also really push and try to get um, matching donations. A lot of um, individuals work for companies who also do matching donations. So we're going to we're going to push that. Um, we are still working to get some some nights at some of the local restaurants. So you know, pay attention to the, the local social medias or the Egan High School soccer social media for that coming soon. And um, we'll be, we're working on some additional fundraising to happen later in the season or after the season so we can keep it going year round. Perfect, thank you, Sarah. You're and welcome. of course, all this hard work that everybody's putting in is so that we can watch soccer, right, Jay? And, uh, and Jay spoke to some of those pieces, uh, but I'll give him a chance to re uh, push for the volunteers at this point. Yeah, I won't go through the whole uh, <laughs> lecture I gave before, but I'm Jay Jensen. Uh, my daughter, uh, daughter's name is Mallory. She'll be a sophomore next year. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm the game day coordinator, as I mentioned before. So, you know, just if you have any interest in participating in that in any way, just let me know. Um, I'll, I'll tell you from past experience, it's a great way to get to meet people within the program. My son played football at Egan, played basketball at Egan. Uh, I did a lot of stuff with Egan TV back in the day, and I learned a ton. It was a lot of fun, and I met a lot of people that I wouldn't have met had I not signed up to serve. So I just want to encourage you to do that. We need you, and uh, you'll have fun, I promise. So that's my spiel. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything else more on the agenda. Uh, I do uh, owe everybody some blasts of emails and we're continuing to update the website and we're continuing to send the Twitter and the Facebook and Instagram out. I will say one thing as we are attached to a school, right? It's not just soccer. There's a high school here. Um, one piece we've been pushing this year is that we're not managing directly Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Maybe we're incapable. I don't know. I don't have any of those. Um, but the, the real purpose here is that we're trying to get these girls to show some responsibility, not just on the soccer field, but for the program. So we actually drive all of those messages you get directly through the girls. So they're the ones responsible for sending them out. So we're trying to build more than just, you know, girls playing soccer, but, you know, women growing into, uh, into the, through high school and beyond. So it's fun stuff. And there was a question that came in. Do we know the captain's practice schedule? We don't have the exact dates and times yet. It will be uh, next Monday through Thursday and the following Monday through Thursday, likely in the morning and 9 to 1030, something like that. However, we're trying to lock down which fields will be on um, and what time it'll be at. So we will be sending that out in that list of blasts, Anthony. I've got a question. Uh, let me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm off mute. Sandra, maybe you can answer this because you might be a little bit averse. Um, the construction around the high school, is that going to be completed anytime soon or is that going to be going for quite a while? It's supposed to be completed by the time school starts. So well, practice is starting, it will still be going on. We'll see. You know how long it takes. But it'll be great when it's done. So I guess what I'm, the reason I bring it up is if you haven't been over to the high school, you know, in the last few months, which most people wouldn't, right? Um, make sure you're approaching it from what's the road, Northview, 
as opposed to yep. uh, from Diffley because the Diffley road is all torn up and you can't even get through uh, from Cub all the way to the high school. You have to go around the other way and it just, it, it can take a while if you're not expecting it. So. That's a good heads up, Dan, thanks. Another question that came in, is it okay to join the practice late if they're already participating in another uh, Egan trained? Um, I'm sure it is to get over to the other practices. I mean, if you can make it, the more the merrier. So uh, there would be not be an issue with that. And then Donna just followed up on the schedule to be confirmed along with exact location. So, perfect. Hey, Nathan, did we ever get an update on the games televised this year? Uh, I believe the home ones for sure are all going to be covered. Yes. But I don't believe we got confirmation on away games. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't answer that. I did follow up with Egan TV. They did confirm the home, but but they said um, no away games. Yeah. That was the last I heard. However, we do have a video camera that we intend to use this year connected to the tower. So we'll work with the uh, managers to hopefully we can get that uploaded to YouTube as well, beyond huddle so that anybody can access it. It won't be real time, but you can go back and watch the film, Bill. Many schools also offer uh, live stream opportunities. Some of those schools, when we're away, some will be free, some will not be. If do we, we know if we, uh, oops, if we uh, ahead, sign, do you know if we sign Skip to another year? We did. He said he would do another year. I would bug him at work if he didn't hear anything because I work with him. So. <laughs> so for everybody who's new, Skip Newton uh, is the father of a graduated senior. So she's a freshman at University of Minnesota now, I think. Um, anyway, he said he would stick around so he would commentate the uh, this year's soccer games. So thanks to Skip. Do we know whether there are going to be restrictions on parents attending the, the varsity games for those who are new to the program? There was sort of a, a list to, of folks who were able to, to join because of COVID restrictions. Do we have any idea whether that's going to continue into this season? That's a great question. I think that was Tricia, right? It was. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Nope. That's okay. Um, that's a great question. And as of this time, we will be going normal. So we will just be entering as we have before. Um, we are working on an online ticketing opportunity right now so that you don't have to stand in line for tickets in the same way. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of that. So we're hoping to have that done by the beginning of the season, but it may be a little bit later where you could buy all your tickets at once if you wanted to, or buy multiples or whatever you want to do. So we'll know more about that in the next couple of weeks. That's great. Thank you. And as of right now, COVID restrictions are not, there's no masks or anything like that either at this time. We have an apparel question. I placed my order, but was charged shipping. I thought maybe they would have been delivered in bulk to the boosters without shipping costs. Just want to clarify. I don't know who, uh, who else did an order. It ships directly to you, correct? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I did it goes to a central location, but I think they're shipping on all of it because I, I had a shipping charge on mine as well. So I think you pay your part of the shipping. I'm not sure. I did find out the store will be open until tomorrow at midnight. So we have, you guys Excellent. have a full day. Thank you, coach. That's great news. If last year, I believe that we distribute, we had the apparel orders that were placed in the early window, we had them delivered and available and we handed them out at the same time we handed out uniforms. We can talk about whether that's the best way to do it again because it got a little crazy. Um, so we'll need some hands to help us distribute everything, but that was the way the timing worked last year. All right. Well, we did it in under an hour. That's fantastic. So again, we're excited for a great fall season. Sherry, Sandy, thank you for taking time. Parents, thank you all thank you. for getting your kids involved and do not hesitate to reach out with questions and uh, get your kids out on the field next week. Captain's practices. Thanks everyone. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.